Feel that. Feel this water. Oh. <laughs> this is hot water. Oh my gosh. I can't believe this is happening. Welcome back to another episode of Outdoor Chef Life. I'm Taku. And we've been traveling all along Alaska in our van this entire summer. And this right here is definitely going to be the most epic trip we have ever done on the channel and probably in my life. We just arrived to one of the most remote cabins in Alaska, one of the most difficult cabins to get to in Alaska. It took some planning, a lot of asking people for a favor to take me <laughs> to the island. It's a very small weather window that allows you to get here to this place. And this morning we took off and we took a seaplane over to a very rural community in, here in Alaska. We made it. Ooh, this is beautiful. Wow. Hey, thanks. From there, Jocelyn and I got a ride from my new friend Trevor. Uh, he agreed. He's a friend of a friend that agreed to bring us out here. Alright guys, here it is. It's right in front of us. This is so sick. The cabin's right there. That big mountain. And that's the that's the hot spring. Such a nice view. <laughs> oh my gosh guys. We freaking made it. That was a mission. Wow. We're going to be spending the next two nights here. And that right behind me, that little cabin you see, that's a hot spring. There's a hot spring in there. That's, oh my God. I can't believe this is happening. So generous of him to, you know, come out all this way because it's such a such a difficult trip but now we made it and let's go let's go check out the cabin first gotta put the stuff away and then we'll get fishing we should be able to fish here and oh we're gonna have an amazing time all right let's go oh wow they got gear up here they got cooking gear and everything oh here's the water that we brought Look at that, they got stoves. So this is a forest service cabin and all throughout Alaska, there are these remote cabins in the woods uh, along the coast and it's managed by the forest service. Let's go check out the inside. Wow, it's so clean too. Look at, ooh, sleep. Many people. They got, oh my gosh, they have all kinds of pots and pans, countertop, they got some, some spices up there, a fireplace, firewood, table, wow, dude, they hook it up over here, yeah. wow, dude, this is so sick, <laughs> just the coolest thing ever, this is literally the coolest thing ever. We can't relax too much because there are bra bears here too. I was going to say brown bears and I said it both at the same time. <laughs> there are brown bears. And if you don't know your bears, there's uh, black bears and brown bears mainly here. And the grizzly bears are, are brown bears. And they get huge. They get really, 
really big and we have our bear spray with us so we got some safety we're gonna do some exploring and hopefully cook some good food maybe catch a couple fish all right first order of business let's go check this out oh my god here we go here we go <laughs> This, this is magical. It's a natural hot spring, and they made this freaking enclosure, this cabin. It's beautiful. Look at that. Very nice ocean breeze. Perfect ocean breeze. Ocean view. Very gorgeous. This, this we cannot beat. Well, that was so relaxing. Now let's go see if we can find a fish. You think there's fish here? Maybe. Okay. Wow, it's very kelpy. I think I'm gonna have to go on that side. All right. This is better. That's doable. We got the cabin right there. I'm starting off with this. Nice, big, big, fast swim bay. I can't believe we're here. I'm gonna keep saying it. <laughs> this is, this is so crazy. And the hot springs are so, so nice. All right. First cast, the only thing that would make this place even more epic is if the fishing's good. First cast. I did not bring too much gear, so I can't risk uh, getting, too, getting snagged too much. So I'm not gonna try to hit the bottom yet. Let's just fish sort of the middle, the top in the middle first. See if we can get anything before we get risky and get close to the rocks. Oh, there was a, f I'm pretty sure, I, I'm pretty sure I, oh yeah, there was, there was a fish following it. Looked like a small rock fish. Oh. Pretty sure that wasn't bottom. I think that might've been a fish. Come on, come on, come on, nothing there. Oh no, I think I'm on kelp. There we go, came off. 
Oh, 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 that was more kelp. Today I'm using my nine foot heavy action Okuma SST with the Cedros 4000 reel. This should get it done for rockfish from shore. Oh, what? Is that a rock? Oh, got over it. <laughs> I thought that was a fish. No fish yet. It's a little challenging trying to fish with all this kelp. But we'll keep looking. Maybe we'll switch spots, do a little hiking, find another good fishable area. Hmm. A little sketchy. Let's go for it. Yeah, check out that rock. Let's see if there's any. If it looks good at all. Ooh. Go. Okay, we'll just give it a shot here. Just a few casts, see what happens. If I keep moving. Fish on. That's a fish. Yeah. Yeah. We got one. What is what is it? Let's see. Oh no, did it come off? Oh no. What is that? No. No, it came off, dude. I swear that was a fish. I swear that was a fish. These hooks are a little dull. So I'm pretty sure it came off. I didn't set the hook hard enough. All right, well, I promise you that was a fish. Do it again. I'll do it again. go here we go the very next cast told you that was a fish oh no it came off again come on dude come on dude i saw it this time i saw it 100 percent this spot definitely feels deeper than that first spot i think we could get a fish No, oh, come on. There we go. Fish on, yep. Fish on. Hey, that's a good, oh, that's a ling cod. We got a small ling cod on. I'm gonna just hoist him up. We got a small ling cod. Look at that guy. Filled with sea lice. Hey, this guy's blue. It's like a nice, nice amber brown and uh, nice and blue on the bottom. Good hook set, but obviously way too small. And first fish, we'll let him go. Nice. You see, I, I told you it was a fish. <laughs> that was actually three casts in a row that uh, I don't know if it was the same fish. I don't think it was the same, but three casts in a row, fish hit. So fishing is starting to look good. Let's see if we can get another one. 
but a keeper. We're hoping for a rockfish here so we can eat them. Oh, oh, something's following it, I think. Right into the kelp gap right there. And drop, drop, drop. And bottom. Oh, that's bottom, and that's still bottom. All right, I think, I think we gotta go back. I think we gotta go back to the cabin and make some dinner, I'm starving. No fish tonight, that's all right. We got low tide tomorrow morning. So I think we're gonna hit the low tide and find something. What do you think? Low tide in Alaska? Should be a negative tide tomorrow. That should that'll be interesting to see, see what we find. Hey bear! Hey bear! All alone, you gotta make some noise to make sure you're not gonna spook any bears. Otherwise, they may end up getting spooked and they might eat ya. Don't eat me. Hey bear! So I'm just gonna keep talking. We'll see you guys back at the cabin. We have some pad thai in a bag. This is my like second time ever eating one of these camp meals or backpacking meals. <laughs> sort of my first time. <laughs> we ate it one time, like yeah. just for fun, just to just test it out. Like a week ago or so. Yeah, just to test, <laughs> just to taste. To so make sure it, we're gonna starve and die here. Yeah. Yeah, I never thought I was going to be making one of these. Yeah. yeah. Just add water. It is really easy though to make when you're hungry. It's pretty convenient. But I do want to make an epic meal out here. I have to. I have to. And I will. Good morning, guys. It is a Rainy morning this morning. It's 6 a.m. I just woke up and uh, we're going to take a little 5 to 10 minutes in this hot spring and then we'll go out to the low tide, see what we can find. I'll take my rods with me as well and we'll try to get a fish or we'll try to get something in the intertidal. That would be, be an adventure. might be the best way to wake up ever. Feeling refreshed, feeling super warm, feeling like we're gonna get something good. Hey bear! Oh it's hot. Yeah, I'm feeling that leftover heat from the hot spring. We'll take this trail for a little bit and uh, see, see where it leads us. I'll go I'm not gonna go back to that same spot as yesterday. I don't think that would be a good tide pool area where I was fishing, so we'll try to find something new. Hey, bear! And I left my fishing rods behind. I wanted to free up my hands just in case I needed to fight a bear or something. <laughs> Here we go, we got some bear poop right on the trail. They are definitely around here, so yeah. I guess we're gonna we're gonna have a fight. <laughs> this is more for my own sake, so I don't get lost. South is the water. East is our cabin, and we are heading west. All right. Oh shoot! It's peak low tide right now. I guess you could say I got a little carried away with the hot springs, but let's get out there. This area might be good. This area is looking good. Maybe let's head out even more. Nobody home. Put that rock back exactly as it was. All this right here, this is a bunch of wakame. That's good eating seaweed. Classic Japanese uh, wakame. Well, I'm having a little bit of a hard time finding some tide pools. These are all just like big boulders and 
uh, not really anything it's like a tide pool so but I just found something right here we got something good right here guys do you know what this is that there that there is known as a gooseneck barnacle also known as percibes in uh, in Portugal it's a big delicacy there and they go crazy for them and they're very expensive uh, and we have them right here on the Alaskan coast gooseneck barnacles and show you guys what they look like so you just tug on them Ouch. this is what they look like and you might be wondering how can this be edible I'll show you how to prepare them in a little bit. Let's see what else we can find and let's harvest some of these gooseneck barnacles. That's a good one right there. So these gooseneck barnacles grow amongst the mussels just like that. Oftentimes they grow together. And we do have these on the California coast as well, but technically, technically speaking, uh, gooseneck barnacles are not, you're not allowed to harvest them um, in the intertidal zone in California. There's a little tiny sea urchin there, and he's on the move. It's almost like he saw us and he wanted to get away. <laughs> the urchin are not really pro problematic here. Like we know them to be uh, in the Northern California region. They're just part of the ecosystem here. And they are native species. Let's find some more food. We gotta need, we gotta need some more. Get all down in there without getting hurt. Nobody here to help us. We do. <laughs> In tunnel. Got a bunch of sea stars on the rocks. But we do have to work fast because the tide is coming up. So these guys right here, these are called a titan, also known as gumbo. And the native people here in Alaska eat them all the time. And they're just like that. Bowl them up. You can prep them. And you can eat them. So let's try these. Oh, here's a whole tide pool filled with small gumbo. And there's a ton of them in there. I think we may have found a purple urchin. Check this guy out. There we go. There you go, a little Alaska purple urchin. Well, maybe that's a red urchin actually. But this one looks like, at least like it, it might be an edible size, so we'll take this. We'll harvest this guy. There's another little red one right next to it. There you go, little urchin. This is actually a red urchin, looks like. But this would be a, might be some, some uni in there. Conditions today are much rougher than yesterday. The rain is slightly coming down, but people do get stuck here all the time due to bad weather and you can't you can't leave. Wouldn't that be the dream? <laughs> it's so cool that I'm about 3,000 miles from home. And yet everything looks familiar. All these tide pools and all the life in here. This right here is known as black seaweed by the native people here in Alaska and they, they eat these this kind of seaweed and it's really good but in Japan it's known as nori and they've been eating it in Japan for a very long time as well and I think it's so cool that even though they're thousands and thousands of miles away we have this similarity in cuisine similarity in the ingredients 
Okay, cool. So we'll take some of these as well. I have a knife. Now, I don't know the clinket terminology for the black seaweed, but I know they, they call them black seaweed. I think we might try to check one more area, but other than that, um, that's gonna be it for the low tide, and we'll head back to the cabin for a little bit, maybe go fish. All right, I had a little lunch, and had another nice soak in the hot tub, in the hot spring. Now I'm ready to get back in the rain, and catch me a fish we can either go back to where we went yesterday and got some bites got that little link on or we can find a new spot I think we go find something new all the rocks around here everything just right in front of me is so uh, it's brackish water so there's a ton of sh small streams going into the water I have to do a bit of a hike here and uh, go find, go to the point. I can see a point it's at least a couple miles out, but we'll see if we get to it. So far, there's this trail. Let's see how long this lasts. Oops. All right, guys. We have hiked a couple of miles, and I think we are here. I think we found something here. This is promising. Look at this. trail didn't really lead to where I was thinking. I wanted to go more towards the outer coast side of the point, but this is like the inside of the point. Hmm. This is really brackish water too. All right, I think we have to keep hiking and keep looking for something that's going to be, it's going to have some fish in it. All right, let's try to get over there. Whew, walk quite a bit. A little bit more. And we're good to start fishing. Whoa! Everything's so slippery. Where should we go over there? Okay, we're here. Let's give it a shot. Looks okay. It looks maybe a little shallow. I don't know. Let's find out. Had a little follow there. Little fish came and followed it and hit the tail right before I'd uh, pulled it out of the water bit the tip of the tail off just bit the tip That's a fish, baby! Woo! Oh! That's a good fish! That's 
It's a crazy looking link hog. God, look at this little red link god. This is insane. Oh, <laughs> oh that just happened. Oh. oh my god. Wow. What a fish. A red link god. Never seen one like this. This is. Oh. Oh. <laughs> that was worth all that hiking. Oh hiking and just going across rocks and all this rain holy crap oh oh wow this, this is <laughs> this is something else amazing Ooh. yes this is the most epic place i have ever been to in my life Okay, well hopefully the audio hasn't been too bad, uh, but uh, there's the link cod in the tide pool. I'm going to bleed them out and we'll take it back to camp. We'll cook them up with the rest of the stuff I got this morning and we'll make a feast. Sounds good to me. See you there. Here we have our link cod. Let's go, let's go ahead and fillet this guy. It's heavy. Yeah. Definitely the biggest thing caught from shore that I've gotten. Keep the generous portion of the collar on because I want to use this tomorrow for a, for some lingcod head tacos with some friends. There we go. That right there is a huge, huge lingcod head. You can almost eat me. No, maybe my head's too big for that. Keep that right there for now. And I'm just doing this away from the cabin. So I don't want the bears to get a sniff of it. That fat fillet, huge fillet right there. Sheesh. Oh, there's some clean hands to the other side. Cod meat. Got the bones. There we go. Not much meat left on that. Ooh. So I just portioned these up, but just noticing that this 
is like the cleanest Lincoln meat I've ever seen. I have not seen a single parasite. Lincoln this big always have parasites. But this one, I'm not seeing anything. So this is the belly side. That's where the normally the par parasites would be. But literally nothing. What? Oh my gosh. Bet it's gonna taste amazing. Okay guys, well let's start cooking. We can't have a fire because it's like pouring rain. Unfortunately, it's been raining all day. Yesterday was beautiful. Uh, yeah, at least uh, we got this grill, fancy cabin, came with it. I have the wakame right here. I'm just gonna start grilling this, this uh, wakame. I don't know what I'm gonna do with it yet exactly, but I'm just gonna throw it on the fire. We'll give this a little taste here. Oh my gosh. Mm. Wow, this wakame is so good. Naturally salty and it's actually sweet. And I'm throwing the nori on here too. This is the wakame. This one's done. It's kind of like half crunchy, half soft. Really tasty. Yeah. My link cod, that's a fat piece. Let's just do some salt and pepper. Nothing fancy. Salt the skin side too. Pepper. Good, good chili flakes. And I have a little bit of sesame oil right here in this jar. Little travel size containers. We'll just rub that in. I'm just gonna package it up in this kombu or wakame I'm sorry Got this off. Go, to, go like that there we go got a nice little lingcod package right there and we'll go straight on the grill I'm gonna rub this noy in that seasoning the leftover seasoning here that would be good close it up let it do its thing now, let's prepare our gooseneck barnacles. Maybe that's what you've been waiting to see. These guys look so weird, don't they? Look at this. In Japanese, they call them turtle hands. They do kind of look like, like turtle feet. But how could this be edible? And there's no way it's good, right? That's what you would think. But in reality, just you wait. I need to boil some water. And this, this stove we brought with us, so it's very compact. It's a good stove from Snow Peak. And let's see how our fish is doing. I think our fish is doing well. Ooh, our nori is crisp, crispy. Oh my God, my God. Nori is so good. I need to take it off. This right here is the nori, aka black seaweed. Best seaweed. I can snack on these all day. I'm gonna save some. We need some salt in here. Well, just toss these in. The entire thing. And we'll boil these. All right, that's about good. Uh, just a few minutes, actually, is good enough, I think. Let's turn that off. Maybe let me just test one. Do a little cold water. Cold water. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. These are ready. I'm just gonna dump the water out. We'll just get it in a little cold water to cool it down. Okay. Just place these on the board. Fish is looking awesome. I'll let the fish go a little longer. It's a nice big piece. Back to my Persebus. Okay, so this is how you prepare them. Pretty easy, actually. Are these weird or what? 
All right, so this is how it's done. It's really easy. Take one of these guys, and right at the base of this sh little shell, you just tear it. You can just tear that little outer piece off. And this, you discard. You can't eat this one. But this part, this is what you eat right here. This is a little underdone still, but that's on purpose because we're going to saute it now. So a little twice cooked, usually like butter, garlic, but we don't have any butter, unfortunately. We got some oil though. We got garlic, but I'm going to do that to all of them. Isn't that totally weird? And basically the top part, you don't eat it. You don't eat the top part. You really only eat the bottom little tube. It's like a clam siphon. I think my fish is done. So I just turn the heat off on my fish. Just gonna let that sit there. Cause it might need to cook through still. Little onion, little garlic. Got a pan nice and hot. And I have some oil here. Also in a little travel size. Throw our onions in. Now I'm going to throw my garlic in. Get them in. Boom. A little bit of salt. A little bit of pepper. That's it. And these will be the tastiest thing you ever had. I am telling you. I'm actually going to do another piece of ling cod in, on the grill. We almost forgot about these guys. So I got some boiling water right now. Just gonna toss them in. Just boil it for about five minutes. These are done boiling. Just put them in some cold water. And this is how you prep them. You just take, take that off. And just take off these, these shells, this armor that they have. And some people will eat that too, that's just the guts. But we'll take that out. Clean this off. And the rest right there, that's all edible. All right. Ooh. What a day, huh? What a day. The conditions, the rain, the rain, that was a lot of rain. But this is what we have to show for it. Everything on this platter is literally from the ocean. And again, Land. the ocean provides. Ooh. Let's crack a cold one. Mm -hmm. Oh, you don't have any. We didn't bring any, yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, thank you. Go ahead, you could get this first, first flavor. Mm -hmm. Almost slipped. That's some uni, you know that. This is nori under it, and there's also uh, wakame. They've been baked and seasoned. This is a ling cod, a grilled ling cod, and this is also a grilled ling cod, but wrapped in wakame. And these, these are the special specialty for today. Gooseneck barnacles. Have you ever had these? Yeah. You did, Just right? once though. Just once? One time ago. Mm. And then at the end, we have the gumbu. 
these ones you can do with your hands and then you basically eat just the tube part so you like pop it off the head's gonna come off the shell and then put the take the top off too just to, and then you eat the rest that, that little bit just the tube Oh. These are crazy. Mm -hmm. They taste like. They taste like crab. Yeah. Flavor of crab. Mm -hmm. Texture of like a really soft squid. Mm -hmm. That. This is like the ultimate deliciousness. If you're ever in Portugal, make sure to order some. I don't know where else they serve it. Some some restaurants will serve it randomly, but it's really good. These are crazy good. Mm. Barbecue sauce. Yeah, the barbecue crab. Oh, it's going on this kelp wrapped wing card. I need my package. <laughs> that looks beautiful. Look at this. Look at that. Flaky. Flaky as it can be. Well, that is good. Mm. 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 Solid. Sweet and sweet. This fish doesn't really have a fish texture. What do you think it has? Mm, not like crab, but it's got one of those threads. Yeah. Yeah. There's like some muscle fibers like crab. Mm-hmm. Oh, this is, this taste is good. Try that thing. Belly. Gumbo. Mm. Texture of like a soft rubber band, but... <laughs> Or like a crunchy, rubber, crunchy soft rubber band, mm. but the flavor of shellfish. Pretty good. Mm -hmm. Almost clam flavor. Oh, it's hot here. Yeah, I know, I need to out. <laughs> well, guys, not many people get to say they've been there and done that about this. And it's all thanks to you that I get to be where I am and I get to do what I do. Uh, I truly appreciate you. Thank you so much for watching. If you like the video, make sure you hit that thumbs up. Subscribe, because more of these really amazing adventures are yet to come. Uh, yeah, that's it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Peace.